Segment 1. A luxurious mobile city pursues a scavenger town. Its desperate residents have depleted their supplies, but it's too late. London City throws out its harpoon, locking the town in place. It will be thrown into the massive furnace to become fuel for London City, and the town's residents will become their slaves. In this competitive world, large cities consume smaller ones to gain power by vying for scarce resources. By the 21st century's end, humanity faced a third world war. Quantum weapons fractured the Earth's plates in 60 minutes, ending civilization. A thousand years later, human survivors evolved into two factions, the peace-loving eastern mountain nation at the foot of Mount Everest, surrounded by mountains and water. Segment 4. The other faction is the traction cities roaming the wastelands, always trying to conquer the mountain nation. However, the mountain nation is protected by strong walls, and all attempts by the traction cities to invade have ended in failure. Hester was raised by her mother, studying relics from the old world. London's overseer, Valentine, frequently checked their work. One day, Hester's mother found a box with a weapon that ended the old war. Valentine, wanting it from the, rudely killed Hester's mother. Hester survived under her mother's protection. This time, she came to London with the scavenger town, prepared. She slowly approached Valentine and stabbed him without a word. As the one to strike again that was stopped by Tom. The assassination failed, and Hester panicked and fled, pursued by Tom. Eventually, she was cornered. With no escape and facing death, she jumped into the garbage chute without hesitation. At the critical moment, Tom grabbed Hester. This was what he did while escaping. But their conversation is overheard by Valentine, who, fearing exposure of his plot, pushed Tom down as well. He then calmly told his daughter that the two fell during a fight, unaware that a man on the opposite platform saw everything. Later, Kelly found the man and learned the truth. He also told her something even more terrifying. Her father had placed a powerful quantum weapon in London's cathedral, intending to invade the Eastern Mountain Nation because London's resources were limited and would eventually run out. Hester woke from unconsciousness and took Tom's money while he slept. Segment 6, and a dagger. Tom, who had never left London, couldn't manage on his own. He had to follow Hester to get closer to her. Hester avoided him. Valentine, discovering they were alive, hurried to a sea prison to unleash a monster to eliminate them. As night fell, Hester and Tom were about to rest when southern hunters attacked. Luckily, a scavenger couple saved them at the last moment. The elderly couple offered food and shelter, but surprisingly, they were uncaught. The next morning, they took the two to a slave market for auction. A striking woman in red approached. She was London's most wanted criminal, Sister Fang, and offered to buy Hester's freedom for a high price. The traffickers attempted to capture Sister Fang for the bounty, but she was not easy to handle. She's Segment 7. Woodson drew her gun and dealt with the black market traders. Hester and Tom escaped in the chaos. Meanwhile, a mechanical zombie found them. Years ago, a severely injured Hester had fainted in a swamp, and it was the mechanical zombie, Old Ray, who saved him. Segment 8. The two spent countless long days and nights in a small house rented from Copper City 58. Segment 9. Old Ray watched Hester grow up, but Hester was always loony. He thought of a solution, to make Hester a machine like him. Segment 10. Old Ray was once human and had a lovely daughter before becoming what he is now. Segment 11. This allowed him to forget the painful past, but Hester soon realized London City was nearing them. He abandoned Old Ray at night to seek revenge, infuriating him with his betrayal. Hester felt he must avenge his mother's death before returning. Just in time, Sister Fang arrived to help, saving them again. As Tom prepared to board the plane, Old Ray gripped the rope tightly. Realizing the urgency, Sister Fang swiftly drew a small knife and urged Hester to cut the rope and leave Tom behind. Hester didn't act. He threw the knife to Tom, who swiftly cut the rope and escaped. Sister Fang told Hester she was a longtime friend of his mother and had searched for him for years without success. Everyone believed Hester was dead. In London, Kelly moved through a secret passage into the cathedral. Valentine took Segment 12, Hester's mother's item that activates the quantum weapon. She would soon wage war on the mountain nation. Hester and his group arrived at the Antitraction League's headquarters, a side city of peace. Unbeknownst to them, Old Ray was tracking them in a flying machine. They had just settled when he interrupted. He was nearly invincible, forcing people to evacuate the side city quickly. Just as they were boarding a plane, Old Ray obstructed their way. Tom tried to buy time, but he was no match for Old Ray. Hester had to plead with Old Ray to spare Tom, saying he was willing to go back with him. 
Old Ray realized Hester loved Tom, and with someone caring for his daughter, he released his obsession. He was fatally wounded in battle. In his last moments, he returned Hester's necklace. Segment 14. Old Ray sank with the Sicity, and soon after, Sister Fan led them to the Mountain Nation. Segment 15. London sought the Westerners for their contact with the Mountain Nation, the last pure land on Earth post-Quantum War. The favorable terrain and skilled guards secured the Mountain Nation's lasting peace, while London City rushed towards it. The Quantum Weapon was charging. The Mountain Nation's guards were ready to strike first, but they underestimated the weapon's power. The Mountain Nation wall are breached, and payoffs at sea. Meanwhile, Hester found a key in the necklace. With it, they could disable the quantum weapon. Sister Fang immediately led a team to infiltrate London City and disable the weapon. But as they neared London, the quantum weapon launched a second attack. The shockwave broke the aircraft's glass, but they had to overcome the defenses. If London attacked again, the Mountain Nation's walls would be breached. With their teammates hover, Hester and his group infiltrated London City. Valentine, eager to breach the walls, ignored the machine's limits and started the third charge. Only one minute remained. The three split up. Sister Fang distracted the enemies. Hester sneaked into the cathedral to disable the weapon, and Tom provided cover from the aircraft. At that moment, Sister Fang was ambushed by Valentine. To buy Hester time, she sacrificed herself. The quantum weapon was disabled, yet Valentine remained relentless. He intended to crash London City into the walls and flee on an aircraft. Kelly, seeing the destruction her father caused, chose to say, at the critical moment, Tom contacted Kelly, asking her to open London City's core chamber. Then, with a dive, he flew in and destroyed London. Oh no, F will help him hot up with balance. He was trying to escape, but Valentine revealed he was Hester's biological father. Segment 17. In shock, Hester gave Valentine a chance. After a fierce fight, she subdued him. Tom piloted the Pearl to pick them up and launched a deadly attack on Valentine's ship. Despite this, Valentine survived, but was soon crushed to death by London City. After the war, Kelly brought London's refugees to the Mountain Nation. The king welcomed them, believing peace was essential for a better life. Ultimately, Hester and Tom departed the Mountain Nation, exploring the scarred world on the Pearl.